Hi guys and welcome to Planet Pathlings. I am your Tuesday's host and I am talking to you today about the element of spirit. I wrote this all down while I had a chance and I thought I would read it to you and let you take what you wanted to take from it. So I will go ahead and do that. Spirit can interact and affect all aspects of our matter and life. This is the element that transcends, yet is a part of all the other elements. It is ethereal. The fifth element has no one direction, while the four classical elements are each associated with one of the four specific directions, north, south, east, west, but ether has no particular direction. Yet at the same time it can occupy and encompass all directions. It is everything and nothing all at the same time. It is of vibrational frequency or sound energy even if you can't hear the sounds. The vibrations are still there and at various frequencies but they do exist. And are used for complete creation and manifestation. It is rhythm, it is energy, it is the ultimate divine. Think of it a little bit like your house. The walls are of four, as are all the other elements, but the fifth acts somewhat like the roof that holds every little thing together. It is the ultimate mortar that connects, that holds, that glues and just simply is. It is the yarn required to make the wool that in turn will create the stitches, that will in turn further interconnect to create a garment which be will become, and therefore be, a complete and whole creation, and is so, because certain elements were brought together to fuse the tail to the comet, so to speak. Spirit is in all things and in all places, and so within us, around us, beneath us, surrounding us, it is to teach us, it is within all objects, buildings, flowers, trees, plants, rocks, water, a piece of glass washed ashore by the ocean. It is everything, it is in life, it is in death, it is a part of rebirth and recreation. People think more often than not inanimate objects do not contain spirit or life or living energies, which I disagree with. A building was laid stone by stone upon its foundation, which in itself was chosen for a particular purpose in mind, intent. And stones are living things, frames and doors, tables and chairs, especially hand-carved or crafted pieces, as they are all made from a living thing. The carpenter carved upon a tree felled or one that found are one that was found and was therefore reutilised for its wood. It has therefore given already not only to our planet as a standing giant, filtering and sieving to help our earth continue to thrive and stay as well as it possibly can based on the way the world is today. She has moved on into her next phase in life to shield and protect a family from danger or maybe shelter them from all other elements rain, searing heat or storms from the sea if exposed to the weather. She now carries a new task to nourish in another way. Strong of will and heart, she now holds full plates and cups of liquid and solid matter to aid as a family feeds and nourishes those who now sit around her now. Maybe humans sat around her once root legs as she remembers her youth, but then her surroundings were fellow wise ones and sprightly young woods. She has most likely seen hundreds of years come and go as her roots and seeds spread across the land upon where herself grew up upon where she herself grew up and stretched sprouting from seedling to youngster, adult to elder, to become very wise of years one day over a over a century later. So how could anyone deny her of the energy she has clearly nurtured and created? For me, trees are so precious and wonderfully sacred beings, 
and bring me closest to the farthest away of times. I often think as I sit beside one of the many beauties around my area and wonder what delights and frights they have probably seen. Some over hundreds of years, the old ones have seen so many secrets of yesteryear and the younglings will definitely outlive me by most likely a hundred more. It certainly makes me think I have memories, fond and not so. I wonder then what she may hold dear to her because spirit is a very powerful everything in all its facets and elements. Regards deity, how on earth do you incorporate spirit within practice or how do you connect regards altar or sacred space? The answer is maybe not as complicated as you may first think. It is whatever resonates with you. It can be something that individually connects with you or that reminds you of your goddess or god. It can be bringing about the outdoors in, collecting water, making or simply lighting a special candle, making a small herb or blend, placing a picture of or photo of a place somewhere that makes you feel at peace and utterly humbled, tending to a past wild animal to honour its spirit, or planting a few flowers to honour the memories of people who have been forgotten or, ha or who have no one to remember them. Or, can be, or it can be as everyday as listening to a piece of music or your favourite song, or even doing what I often do, tune in to nature's radio. The channels are endless, free, and all at, at the simple turning of a door handle or window latch. My personal favourites are FM Autumn or Radio Rainfall. Some things I do as often as I can is tend to old buildings, and the older the better and preserve in my own individual way things connected with them, such as plants, stones or rocks, bits of window ledge or glass, or even glass with past, but already contain bones or butterflies contained within. But everyone connects in their own way. You choose yours. Lots of love and blessed be, and I will see you next week. Bye!